What is going on everyone? Welcome to the Thai Life channel. My name is Min and in this video I will be performing a set red bottoms on this client. The last time I did some red bottom nails, I polished the bottom of the tips. It looks I. It didn't look wow. It looks I. And this time we don't want to make the set look I. We want to make it look nice. So what I did was I did some research and I saw this one nail tech use clear tips and she polished the red on top of the clear tips and she flipped under the nail and the bottom red is perfectly nicely smooth. So that's what I'm going to do in this video and you guys going to see it and I am going to explain to you the whole process and how I was feeling for each moment of the process as I am doing this, executing this set for my clients. Because as we all know, we want to make sure the set looks beautiful at the end of every service because that's going to lead to the clients coming back to you for more services. But the first thing I'm going to do is clean out the cuticle. You don't have to do the cuticle if the clients have good cuticles, but a lot of time, clients going to be going to go in to the nail salon with some raggedy looking cuticles. There's clients in different occupation where the hands get really dry due to other chemicals. They get some really dry skin. Me as a nail technician, I add the cuticle cutting as part of my service if they need it. Some salon, you have to ask for that service as an add-on because some salon is all about quantity, getting you in, getting you out. If you ask for any additional stuff, it's an add-on. So remember that. So after I clean out the cuticles, when you guys are doing the paper sanding on the natural nails, after cutting cuticles, what I usually do is I usually sand around the cuticle line just to get that roundness. There's something about getting your nails done the moment you have a very nice round cuticles. It just look amazingly beautiful when you flush it down. So that's what I did and make sure you guys are being gentle, okay? So the tips that I am using right now, these are pre-shaped ballerina straight tips. These tips can be very dangerous putting them on depending on the nails of the clients. Some of the clients nails are like flat. Some of the other clients nails are curved, okay? So these pre-shaped tips that you usually see or buy on the internet, they're usually curved. So they're made for nails that are curved. So why is that important to know? It's because if you have a client with flat fingernails, if you press down a curved tips, you have a tendency to break the tips or bend the tips or crack the tips. Those are the scenarios that you're going to face. So I always examine the client's natural nails before I determine what is the best solution tips for this client's nails. This is why it's important that there was this theory where people were saying, oh, if you don't use straight tips nowadays, you ain't a good nail tech, okay? That is a dumb saying, okay? That is the most ignorant saying you will ever tell another nail tech that. Don't even speak about that, okay? If you ever tell a nail tech that you have to use straight tip to make the nail look pretty, you're just a dummy, okay? Because if you are an artist, you are good at your craft, you can shape any type of tips that is given to you. You can even freeform it. So when I apply these tips on, I got to make sure the client's hand are nice and straight because some client's hands are crooked as we all know that. So be very careful. So after I apply the tips, as you all know, the most fun, important part is really cutting down the length. Clients always think twice when it comes to picking the length. It's the funny thing. Two things in a setup nails that you will see that clients are contemplating most of the time is picking a color and picking the length of the nails. So after I determine the length of the client's nails, I am going to go in and just one more time with the paper band and smooth out the tip surface. As you all know, the Pre-shaped tips are usually a little bit thicker. Um, they usually have a little dent from the nail base. You want to make sure you smooth out that part. 
So here is what I usually do after I do all the filing is I go in with the dehydrator. The dehydrator helps really takes away a little bit more of the moist and really help with the bonding of the acrylic. So this step right here, I find it very important. Uh, I used to not to do this, but since I've been doing the dehydrator solution before the primer is the game changer. So now I am going to go in with this red. Okay, so this red that I'm using is by Madame Glam. They sent me this item just to try it out uh i don't usually use this color often but honestly i love the red the fact that it's loud the fact that it looks like it's a ferrari red it's firing red uh i put that on top of the tips that i just apply on so when you guys are polishing on top of the tips try not to get it on the natural nail base try to polish on to just where the tip is at you don't even have to get close to the top of the tips where it's close to the natural nails. You just have to get it perfectly around the circumference of where the nail starts to grow out, where the nail beds detach. So that's what I did was I just kind of polish it. I don't have to use two coat because what the clients really want is not like a definition of coat. She just wants some red bottoms and I feel like one coat would do it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and cure it. And I am going to add a top coat. Now, I don't know if this is the right way of adding a top coat or not. But the recent time that I have done red bottoms. If you polish the gel red on top of the nails. And you do not put a top coat on there. If you add acrylic on top you can brush away some of the pigmentation of the colors of the polish. So that's what I did was I put the top coat on top so that it doesn't smear out the colors when I am putting the acrylic on. So that was the easy part. Now the hard part is the application over the red because you have to pick the right consistency of nude that it doesn't show through the red. Now that is challenging because now if you pick a dark nude, the clients might not want that dark nude color acrylic. They might want something lighter, right? But problem solved is if you have different type of nude gel polish, which Gaudi Nails, as you all know, that's the polish brand that I love to use. They just came out like a new collection. And you can just use that new polish gel and just polish on top of it to cover up the red. You can also do that. But we want to create a good base. So what I did was I went in with the Young Nail Rosebud. And the monomer that I am using is also Young Nail Monomers. I used to use the CND Retention, but since I've been using the young nail monomers and you know they always have stuff on sale like monthly it's just cheaper for me to save me some money as i'm performing these kind of good stuff on my clients so as i am applying the acrylic the first coat of acrylic that i apply on i can still see the red and to me i feel like it's okay to see some red but what you don't want to see is the line where the red starts and where the red ends in the middle of the tips because that just look funny like you don't want to look at a set of nails and you can see the line that way you finish polishing the red on top of the clear tips so you can go in with two coats of acrylic or even three if anything and that just all depends on the nails again so when it comes to applying acrylic does one bead of acrylic going to solve the problem with every single nails that you're going to deal with? Absolutely not. For example, if you have a client with flat fingernails, more likely you have to use more acrylic to build that acrylic up into a nice apex for her because you don't want to give her flat nails just because she's already have flat nails. Your goal is to build that nice foundation for the client's nail. So that's what I see a lot in 
like regular salon industry is that when people are so fast as doing nails, they are not paying attention to all the detail of the apex, the quality around it. What you want to do is you want to focus on building that nice apex because clients are sick and tired of having flat nails. So they come to you for that. Okay. Of course, if you have a client with nice curved nail, you don't have to put a strong apex because that curved nail is going to hold it together. So that just depends on the nails when you guys are doing acrylic application. I think when it comes to doing acrylic application, there shouldn't be any right or wrong. There should be your way. Because I always believe that this nail is such an art kind of craft that I feel like everyone is their own artist. Everyone has their own way of doing beautiful nails. But the fact that when we were back in the day where, you know, in the 90s, in the early 2000s, like when I was starting out doing nails, we were taught to start out with a size 18 brush. And we were taught to say, hey, you got to do a full set in 45 minutes. We were taught to say a polish chain should be done in 15 minutes. That is why the nail industry is set such a low price to begin with. That is the problem why we have such a hard time letting our clients nowadays know that we are worth more than what the service is. Because back in the days, people mentality was that this was easy, easy money, Get the class in and out. We can charge them this much. $10 for a polish change. Even $8 for a polish change. 10 minute, 15 minute, in and out. But it's not like that anymore. You can, you do still see salon operating like that. Yes, you do. But that is slowly going to shift. Because the newer generation understand and know the true beauty of the modern nail world. And this is just important to know as you as a client, you as a nail tech, you somebody who wants to be a nail tech, it's important to understand how things are created for us nail tech nowadays. So that's where we come up with the cheap price. That's why there's a lot of clients out there they always say, oh my God, nail techs are overcharging. They are expensive because they are so used to how cheap the price is. But things are getting expensive with the product in the nail world. Acrylic are like $15, $16 a bottle. And sometimes we have to buy so much colors because we don't know what the client's going to pick. So we stock up and we only end up using 10 of those favorite bottles. And the rest 30, 40 bottles are sitting there collecting dust. But what can we do? It's part of the industry. It's part of the service. You either have it or you don't. Because you never know what the client is going to ask you. That is why we have to start upping our price. That is why we have to start telling ourselves that our service is worth more than the price that we are charging right now. Regardless of Paulus change, regardless of a soak off, those little tiny service, not everyone can do. It takes skills. You ever had a client tell you stories that they had to sit there at nighttime while they're watching their Netflix show and they're trying to take off their acrylic. You know how long it takes them? Some even have to use a toothpick, a thread. Some have to use their shirt, their teeth, their toenail to break the other toe. For real. That's why I believe that in the future, our service is going to be dominate and worth every single penny the client's going to pay for it. Because the value, the craft that nowadays that you see on a set of nails is amazing. 
So now, y'all, as I am doing the acrylic, my focus right now is really just to cover the red. But my next focus is that, what about when I start filing? Is it going to show the red on the bottom? But you know what? I told myself, I'm going to trust the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to file very nicely and gently. Don't be rough with the filing when you guys have a little polish on the bottom. Yeah, you can also put a clear powder over this to make sure that it's a guarantee you won't shave it off if you file too hard. You can do that. But I didn't do that, so I had to be gentle. The reason why I didn't do that is because this client, she got small, little, tiny fingernails. So technically, I can't really do coffin shape or ballerina shape on her. It would make more sense if we're going to make it more like a taper square, especially how long her nail is compared to her fingernails. So that's what I did. And the best part about using these pre-shaped coffin uh, ballerina shape is that when you add the acrylic on top, it becomes taper square. Because if you use a regular square, then it would kind of be too wide. kind of look like duck feet. And you don't want that, right? So, as I am filing, I am watching the corner of each of the tips to make sure I'm not bleeding into the red. And if I did scrape off the red, my second plan in my head was I can just go in get some red paint and kind of paint all the missing pieces. It's just going to take me a little bit longer, but that's what I will be doing if I messed up. So what I'm just telling you right now is that you are planning. As a nail technician, this is the process where clients do not know and do not understand. We might be talking to the client. We might be smiling. But inside our head right now, we are planning how to execute this shape. We are planning in our head what we're going to do the next step to make ourselves more efficient while the client is yapping their mouth. Am I right? Let me know if I'm right. And if you agree with everything that you are listening right now, please give me a thumbs up and leave me something in the comment. Let me know if you agree with everything I've been saying and how you feel about paying, charging low, how you feel about clients complaining about your charging too much. Let me know everything is on your mind. We are here to talk about it. We are here to support one another in this situation. So after I use my hand file, you know I got to flush the cuticles. But here's the thing about using the hand electric file right now. Is that I already filed the edges on the side. I don't want to go in with the side too much with the electric file. Because like I say, I'm afraid I might shave off too much of the nude and it shows the red bleeding through. I don't want that. So when I do is that when I go in with the electric drill, I focus on the cuticle line. I smooth out the surface. But also this too, my friend. When you guys are smoothing out the surface on top, don't smooth out too much because you might see the red through it. So you see, it's very complicated. But again, remember what I said earlier? We had a backup plan. If anything goes wrong, we get the polish and we're going to jump in and get the polish. So if I am shaving off the acrylic too much and I'm starting to see the red bleeding through the nude acrylic, heck, I am going to go ahead and be like, hey, let's go ahead and add a nude polish over this. And there is nothing wrong with that. And I feel like that is the most important thing for any nail technician is to know that you should be able to readjust idea with your clients. And clients should be able to understand and respect the fact that you open up and let them know that, hey, maybe this is a better way for you to do your nails. Because at the end of the day, the clients, all they want is pretty nails and what they brought in as a design. 
You are the expert is the nail tech. You know what to do. You know what process to take. You know what step to make. So I think it's important that you communicate that with the client and let them know like, hey, you know, uh, so this is what's going on. So what we should do is add this. And trust me, the client will appreciate that more than you just leaving your mistake all on their nails while they are at home watching the Netflix show, looking at their nails and realizing you fucked up. You don't want none of that, okay? So now, as we are getting closer to finishing up the filing, what I love about this nude over this red is that it kind of created like an ombre. It kind of looked like ombre. If you guys look closely on the nails right now, it looks like the nude is kind of transitioning into the pink and which it makes it look pink because the nude mixed with the red give you a pink shade. So the client was actually loving that. So you see, it's like some of the things that you envision in your head, like, oh, you got to get it perfect. Sometimes, honey, the imperfect things you do might be the perfect thing that the clients want. Ain't that something, huh? But that's the truth about this industry. And that's the truth about what I've learned through my 20 years of experience. Is that sometimes... Yeah, there are moments you do have to fake it to make it. But there are moments where the mistake is when you make yourself better than you were yesterday. Ain't that the truth? And if you agree with me again, go ahead and give me another thumbs up. And make sure to share this video and leave me a comment. But other than that, y'all, as I am buffing the nails, I'm very satisfied. I'm very happy. But as I'm buffing the nail, I'm very gentle again. I don't want to ruin the shape. I work too hard on the shape. I see a lot of nail tech. They be buffing the shit out of these nails at the end. Like they are like relaxing. Them. No. Don't ruin the shape. Be gentle. Buff it right. Buff it nicely. And go in looking cute. Okay. So now. I am going to go in with a Frenchie now. Yeah. We're not done yet. Oh, you thought we were done? No. We got the red bottoms and we got the nude color acrylic on top. Now we need to do the French. This is probably the fastest way to do a French. I literally just paint the nail and just form a mini little round smile. Okay, that's all I am worried about right now. I am not worried about anything. I'm just going to form in all the gap that I need to form. If you want to make your life nice and curved and sharp, you can do that later. Because right now, I just want to be efficient. I want to be perfectly timely manner. So I'm just going to fill in the blank. So the blank is the top of the tips. Once I paint the top of the tips, I am going to go in with the line brush. And I'm just going to connect the dot. And at this moment, you just let the clients know like, hey, bitch. How deep do you want your French? You want your French deep or you want your French non-deep? So after that, you just kind of go follow the dot and make the French smile. That's how easy it is. Okay? I see people doing all type of design where they draw the happy smile first. And they use a thin brush to color it. Like, why are you guys doing so much? Just go in with the polish on the tip and just connect the line. And once you do it, you know what I mean? And the best part about this is like you can readjust. If, if you messed up, you can kind of bring the line up a little bit more. You can bring it down. But the main thing is you got the gap fill in. Okay? I just want to let you know what's efficient, y'all. Because here's the thing. I have tried multiple different ways of doing French. I tried drawing the two diamond line. Put the connect in the middle. Everything I see, I tried. But honestly, down to the line, this is my favorite way. You fill in the gap, you connect the dot, you swirl as many up and down, smile, deep, not deep, whatever you want. It's going to happen. It's going to happen real fast. Okay? So now, after I do this, you do have an option where like, hey, you can go in with a second coat of the black or the white or whatever color French you're doing to make it more dark. Then you do the same concept. You brush in all the gap, you go back in with the dots, and you can go in with the line and you connect it. But again, I'm telling you, 
This client right here, she hella bougie, okay? You think these French that I did looks cute, right? You be thinking like, okay, she got the red bottoms on. She got the black French on. What else? She want these black French to be reflective glitter, y'all. Okay? She want these damn French to be reflective glitter. So after I cure it, 60 seconds, I got this reflective glitter right here. It's by Beatles. Okay? I tell you what, man. This color right here is a go. Every time I bust this color out, clients just want to drop the penny hose. Nah, I'm joking, y'all. They don't do that in front of me. That, that was just a joke. But you know what I mean. It is fly. It is off the wall. It just looks fresh. So now she got them Frenchy black base. And she got some silver reflective glitters on them. Mm. Look at her. So now what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in with the line brush. And I'm going to just clean up the line, y'all. You see how easy that is? Just cleaning up the line, y'all. Just cleaning up the line, y'all. That's how easy it is, y'all. And the reason why I like to make things easy, because I have back-to-back -back appointment, and I want you to have back-to-back -back -back appointment so that you have to work efficiently. And you see, throughout the whole process, I did not even make a mess on my station. You see how clean my station look? And this is me working, performing on my client, showing you this, y'all. Okay, this is not no model hand. This is not somebody who I pay, or this is not my own hand. Talk about my own hand. I kind of need a manicure. That's why I'm wearing gloves right now, okay? I know a lot of people be like, oh, you need your nails done. I get y'all. I'm too busy trying to take care of my family and people's nails. But my point is, y'all, work efficiently, okay? Work smart, not hard. Don't think about like, oh, this is the only way. Find what works for you. Nail is open range. There's no such thing as a one-way street in the nail industry. If I do this way works for me, hey, maybe the other way that I don't like might work for them. Okay, I'm not going to hate on how they do stuff. But find what works for you. So as you all know, we're going to end it with the Gotti Nail Top Coat. You know Gotti Nail Top Coat is bomb.com, okay? The gloss will speak for itself. I don't give a damn. I have a lot of clients be like, man, this gloss is loud. And that's what you want because that's the finish work. If you're going to want to gloss some nails, you want to make sure that nail is glossy, okay? Because if it ain't glossy, bitch, I don't know why you be wearing nails for unless you want it matte, all right? But my point is, you got to have a good gloss. And Gaudi Nail right here, the top coat, is on point. No doubt, y'all. But at the end, you know, like we always say, this is how the nails look like, y'all. This is how the nail looks like. Look how clean they look, man. She was happy. Y'all take this method. Go out. Get that red bottom on your clients. I hope you learned something. I hope you find value in this video. Because I sure enjoy making this fun video for y'all. Because this was a good educational, good time sharing experience. I love y'all. I see y'all in my next video. Thank you for watching. And subscribe.